care about these. Uh, this one as well, that one changed anyway, so that was wrong. Um, I guess we don't need anything else. We know uh, mflags is here. We have the base address, which is this one. Base address, and that's where our player information is stored. Um, and we have all these things, so we know that the client DLL plus uh, five, so zeros before the number don't count, five three FB zero four is our base. So <coughs> um, now we've we've done a large part of this guys, so let's just move on to the next bit. Now the next thing to do is forcing our player to jump. So if I do a quick check here quickly, I need to make sure I'm not taking too much hard drive space, 154, that's fine. Um, um, the, yeah, the next thing to do is, um, so we have our information, we know, um, you know, where is our player located, we know um, when when is the player jumping, when is the player standing still, etc. and all that. And now we just need to know how to force the player to jump. Now, if we go into source, now for source games you have the, the command which is called plus jump and minus jump, and those are used to call engine functions which force our player to jump. Now in other games all you do is you hook a keyboard um, and you force, uh, you use send input to force the game to jump, right? So it, it's really the same way but um, source games allow us to do this in a nicer way, it's easier. Obviously if you were cheating and using this online you probably shouldn't do that because they're definitely going to catch you. So sending input or writing the address in memory is always the best option. So. Um, what we want to do is go here into console, press plus and jump. Boom, as you can see that jumps our player to where we want. Now we want to start a new scan and we want to put the value 5 here. Now why 5? Again, like I said earlier, you can, instead of looking for 257, 256, you could search for a non-initial value and then check for change value and then check for change value constantly by pressing plus jump and minus jump. Now, to save us time, I'm already helping you with what is required. So again, we could go a non-initial value and then change and then change based on minus jump, plus jump. So I know that plus jump equals 5. So if we go first scan for 5, do a couple more scans, blah, blah, blah get rid of a couple of results and then do minus jump and look for four boom and that cancels our jump there you go oh we got one address and it's a static address beautiful is this what we're looking for well let's confirm that so if we go on the address and set that to five boom you see that beauty we jump set it to four doesn't do anything set it back to five boom and the way it works is if I try to set it to five again it won't matter because it won't do anything so yeah there you go sets it back to four if I set it back to five so and um, as you can see the way it works is you need to set it to five and if you want to jump again you need to set it to four and then back to five so you got to keep alternating between them and that's how we're going to do it in code so we have everything that we want let's just store this address now we have all the information that we want um, uh, as you can see the jump isn't an offset it's simply an engine call so it's client DL plus that so we know that one straightforward so we've done everything that we wanted with cheat engine um, as I said earlier, the jump call, you can simply do that yourself, um, uh, finding the memory address for that. You just need to send input, and there's a lot of different ways to do that online. Maybe I'll cover that in another tutorial, but I'm pretty sure most of you guys will be able to figure that out yourselves. Um, so we have all the information that we want. We no longer need Cheat Engine. Let's get rid of that. And I'm going to close Counter-Strike for a little bit as well. I guess it just make things easier for me. Um, yeah, so... Yeah, I'm going to close Counter-Strike and then we'll open it back up once we've coded what we need to code. So, close that for me. And let's get... Alright guys, um, as you know, it wouldn't be a tutorial without the dirty folder. So make sure you look for those. I forgot to mention that earlier. Or I guess you guys probably found them by now anyway. Because now you guys are like checking out my desktop like a bunch of eagles. Which is awesome stuff. So, what we're going to get on with now is the code bit. So, go here. I'm going to be using... Visual Studio. Now, a lot of you guys um, seem uh, to, well, you've said, you know, you can't get Visual Studio because it's expensive. Well, it's not expensive. It's free if you get the um, the straightforward versions. So, um, what I recommend you do is you get uh, Visual C++. I think it's 2010 or 2012 should work fine as well. Um, and I'll be using 2010 because I just, um, well, I'm too lazy to upgrade. Um, but um, let's get on with this. This is the cool part. Well, I guess the whole thing's a cool part. So, you want to go File, New Project. So, whatever 
you can be using a new compiler or a different compiler that's fine as long as it's C++ based it should work just fine and it works with console alright so new project alright come on what do you mean not responding are you talking about don't be a fool alright so here we have you want to select Visual C++, which is what I normally select, and you want to go for Empty Project. Empty Project because we want to, you know, we want to play around with our stuff and do th things however we want to do them. So I'm going to call this. Um, I'm going to call mine YT, just so I know it's on YouTube. Uh, Bunny Hop CPP. So call yourself Bunny Hop. Call your, you know, call it whatever you like. Um, it's up to you. So press OK then. Wow. Visual Studio is actually really slow with um, recording software, which is weird. The game runs fucking fine, but uh, Visual Studio has a problem with it. So we have that done. Hopefully, the uh, the compiling will be fine. Um, we have that done. So I'm going to open the second one here because I need my notes. Um, so what we're going to start off by doing is we're going to um, yeah. One thing actually that you need is a file that I'll put in the uh, in the description there will be a code files required and all you need to do is paste that file in now that is part of the reason why I credited Nubtick at the beginning of the tutorial I got this file from him and all it does is it does some of your like work and it you know it saves you the boring stuff that you normally would have to do yourself so right click here header files click add uh, new item um, yeah add new item and what I'm gonna do is uh, get your file called hack process I've got this here and this is my hack process file and what I recommend you do is um, write, uh, copy all the text in there so open it with notepad, notepad++ I recommend and then copy all the text and you want to go here create a header file, header.h for those of you that know you can also right click and add existing file that way it might be easier I'm going to call it hack process uh, .h will do it by itself so click add and paste all that code come on there you go beautiful so really you don't have to worry about anything like that um, read the comments if you like that it's really nothing special and, and it's I mean it's good code but it's stuff that we've done before in other tutorials um, but it's more specific to counter-strike so if you're doing this for another game you most likely won't need this and you can um, do the hooking to the thread and the module by itself um, in order to find the base addresses etc so you don't really need that so the next thing we're going to do is right click on source files add a new item so again as I said hack process does our leg work for us and it makes our life easier so click uh, uh, CPP file and write main so that will be our main.c++ and that will be our core bit of code so what we want to do now is want to declare our ver all our variables and that will be the uh, fun stuff hopefully so um, hash and then include um, windows.h we need that for quite a few things come on read doesn't like recording software and it doesn't help that I'm running a PC that's a couple years old for fuck's sake I need to get a new one alright um, IO stream we want to include IO stream as well beautiful stuff close that uh, and we want to include our hack process header file which is what we need. So if you don't understand much about C++, this is some of the basics there. Um, you know, um, I'm not saying if you don't understand C++ to leave here. I mean, feel free to stay. You'll be able to do it just the same as anyone that knows C++ as long as you follow the instructions well. Um, so what we want to declare here, C uh, hack process F process, uh, and this will be used to um, basically this calls uh, a variable get rid of insert there this calls a uh, creates a variable an object that is from this here so it's this class here that we're creating this object again you don't have to worry about that but I'll explain when we get to it and then you want to using the using namespace excuse me std which is something I know a lot of you guys have um, and then we want to go, um, and then STD will allow us to call the IO stream functions. By the way, I'm making jokes here. I'm not, you know, telling you what I should be telling you. So then you want to go constant D word, all in capitals there, player. So I'm just going to maximize this on my thingy anyway. I'm getting a bit blind. Player base equals. Uh, you want to go zero times. So now if we go here, what is our player base? Well, we know that our player base is this address. 
So let's copy that. Ignore the zeros. Again, it's like a normal number. If you have 001, you know the zeros don't count. So copy those. Oops, back to that. And copy that. So that's our base address. Player base. That's what it is. And the reason why you do zero times is to tell the compiler that it's a hexadecimal number. Okay? I think I covered that before, and I'm sure most of you guys know it, but just for those of you that don't. And then you want to go DW jump. And what is this one? Well, equals. What is DW jump? Well, DW jump is the address that we use uh, to force our jumping. So that's the address we use and put write 5 to it, and then boom, that's how we jump. So boom, put that in there. And then we go, um, yeah, constant D word again, DW uh, jump offset, offset equals 0 times 34. Oops, 34C. Now, if you look here to match our results again, 34C, that's our M flags. So you can call that M flags if you like. Uh, I want to make it a bit simpler by calling it DW jump offset. All right, so what does that tell us? It tells us is the player on the ground, is the player standing, is the player crouching, whatever. So that's how we know when to jump. So if he's on the ground, we jump. If he's on the air, we, we minus jump, etc. So we then want to go hashtag, hashtag, I'm not on bloody Twitter. All right, uh, we're gonna go define. Um, yeah, let's say FL on ground. So is the player on ground? That's 257. So we know that from the information we took that when it says 257, then the player is on the ground. So that's what we're gonna use to compare. And then we're gonna go define space. But bear in mind that I do a lot of this extra stuff just so it makes your life easier and you don't really necessarily have to follow everything but uh, you know it is recommended obviously so uh, spacebar 0 times 20 now this is from the um, it's just to, to tell us press the spacebar and and do the jumps that's really what this is it's not nothing special uh, we could just do if get us in key state so if the key pressed equals 0 times 20 which is means spacebar then do our bunny hop and then we go define uh, F6 key, which is what we use to quit the uh, main loop. Key 0 times 75. So 0 there. Excuse my really bad typing. Uh, and then we do bool be true, which is what we'll write to memory um, to say plus jump. Yep, it's true. And then bool be false equals false. Oops. Um, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. And then bull bunny hop status equals false beauty. There we go. Now we use that one. I'll explain that when we get to it, it'll be easier, much easier. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna create um I don't know if I should do that first, check out my notes quickly. That's fine. Roger, create main, declare variables, call main loop. Yeah, that's it. So we're gonna code the main loop now, just make our life a bit easier. And we go Na, na, na. Int main main uh, and then just close that there. 